Welcome to Navarre Roads Online Showcase Video, MIA Edition. Today might be the end of this world as we know it. I'm sorry I just woke up today and decided to be a bit dramatic. You know how it is sometimes. Thing is, in the last uh, showcase video I forgot to mention this little thing behind me. So that's what we are going to start out with. I also want to show something that I may have already spoiled in the update video. Plus some things that may or may have not happened in between the two. And also how I'm going to be going about what the update brought to us and how the series is going to continue moving forward. So let's get into this little shed right here, which is currently housing my 10 mile radius which started its life as a road going engine but eventually was just yeah, degraded to being a helper engine at the ironworks here due to the lack of a decent top speed. Usually I would only use this to help fill up the empty cars, however eventually uh, recently I figured that I wanted to change how the entire station works, so I rebuilt it having a few more sightings for the, uh, for the unloading area, which means that I can now store a few supplies here on the cars and then if I ever need to, can, can just get them from the sightings to the drop-off platform, empty them out and the, that kind of stuff, just so I don't constantly run out of supplies when trying to load uh, stuff onto another train here. The thing is, in order for all of that to work, I need the work uh, of a helper engine to actually be able to reach both sides of the building. So I moved it from over there, and just straight ahead where the turntable is right now, and that could only really ever go to the northern part of the building without going through this entire maze of the station, to just over here where I have uh, one single switch uh, to flip for you to decide between going to the north or southern part of the building. And yeah, that's working out pretty well, pretty practical, and I just decided to have a little bit of decoration around it. Put it in a shed so it's uh, sheltered from the, um, yeah, from nature, from any rain or wind and that kind. Have a bit of a, a decorative uh, supply area here. But the main thing for me, which is surprisingly nice, I gotta say, just being able to be on this platform, and if I need to go into the engine, just being able to do one single step up instead of having to climb into it. It's a bit weird, but it feels really nice to have it like this. So yeah, mostly decoration, but also some functionality, and it's kind of really nice in my opinion. Could have maybe done a bit more with this area, but I think as it is, it's working out pretty well, and yeah, just looking kind of nice. Next up, at the refinery, I mean with the last update, I know I could now just remove uh, some of the stuff that I built here at the platform, this ramp being pretty practical, but maybe that could be a bit refined as well. But yeah, this whole thing could go, this could go, now the, um, the ramps don't work, I was about to say that, but no, they actually don't, they just uh, spawn the stuff at the end of the platform, but that's working pretty consistently, so no need for this stuff anymore. However, the main thing I want to talk about here is this cute little shed. So we have an outbuilding that I put onto some groundwork, just to be a bit higher and level with the actual uh, track here. And I extended the roof out a little bit using the boards and also some uh, support for it. Just so I have a roof uh, to go over the head of uh, the rocker bee right here. Nothing too fancy, but I think it works out pretty well. I could have maybe sloped the roof down this way, very shallowly, instead of doing it as an extension of um, what we have here already. I think that looks a bit goofy by being so high, but also this allows any smoke and steam to just go off into the distance without any problems. So it's not getting trapped up there. Was also considering or maybe putting down a wall over here, either consisting of the um, of the planks or the boards. But then again, the world is getting a bit laggy for me sometimes, so maybe not overdo it with uh, props. But I think as it is, it's looking okay, and well, plus um, 
providing the engine with a little bit of a thing that it can call home. So it's not just being on the tracks all the time without any real place to stay when it isn't needed. So next up, let's talk a bit about multiverse theory. And I promise you guys I'm going somewhere with this. So multiverse theory in short is the theory that whenever something can happen, like maybe somebody makes a decision on something, or maybe something random occurs, all the possible outcomes from that uh, happen in their own multi or in their own universe. It kind of just splits into multiple paths and those just keep continuing down with whatever happened at the moment and just keep spreading and forking all the time all over the place with every single thing that could be different in one of them. So theoretically, let's say I'm walking on the sidewalk, I could either move to the side or go through a dip. If I go through a dip, I could maybe stumble. Maybe I can just catch myself, maybe I stumble into somebody else, maybe I fall flat on my face. If I fall flat on my face, there is the option that maybe I break something, maybe I can get back up unscathed, maybe I laugh it off, maybe some other people laugh at me, whatever, that kind of stuff, and it just keeps going and going like this. But where am I going with this whole thing? Well, let's just say I was recently faced with a few decisions regarding uh, how I wanted to keep playing here. The first decision was something that I kind of already talked about in the last video. My main idea was to maybe take a little bit of a break after that video and just wait for the anniversary update to drop. And the other option would have been to maybe still keep a bit uh, of a grind going until then, make a bit more money after all. No idea what would come out with the uh, update and maybe I needed more than the money I had at the time. And maybe if I decided to go for the grind, that would have been the option to just stick to all the stuff that I had at the time and just keep doing industry supplies as it was. Maybe I could have gone and actually gotten the few more tanker cars that I was looking forward to acquiring, do a bit of investment for hopefully a larger return. And maybe I could have gone completely nuts and bought two more climaxes as well to build up the station over here and be able to get all the stuff to the refinery a bit quicker. And maybe if I went with all that, I could have found out that potentially 24 cars for 24 tanker cars was maybe a bit too heavy for getting them out of the valley where I put the oil field. Maybe one option there would have been to just do it in parts and just stick with uh, everything that I had there. Or maybe I could have gotten some stronger engines. Maybe at that point I also figured out that maybe the Cook 2.8 over which would have been the next step up also didn't work out. Maybe at that point I could have gotten back to the old safe, or maybe I could have gone uh, further and even gotten more stronger engines. Something like that, there are a lot of different options that could have happened, so let's see what we got here. I mean, it would be pretty ridiculous to buy two more climaxes, that's like $11,000 so shortly before the update. There is no way I bought another two, I mean, that would be... That's very unwise at that point. Anyways, uh, let's say hello to Sandy and Brandy. The thing about the tankers is, it's a bit more reasonable to do something like that. At least you get more for your money, you should be able to do stuff a bit quicker than before, if you at least can get them out of the valley and up the 2% line towards the logging camp uh, station. Turned out those cars are a lot of cars. There might also have been the purchase of a caboose involved to mark the ending of that, just to keep track of all of those things. And I mean, just look at them, they just keep going. I didn't expect 24 cars to be actually this many. But yeah, they are, apparently. So that was a bit of an issue. And I don't know what went wrong. I Maybe I kind of overestimated a few things, maybe I misremembered actually being able to 
get uh, 16 of them or 12 of them, whatever I was. I think it was 16 of them up here using only the, um, uh, the Ruby Basin for the 1% increase. Maybe something went wrong there and I just couldn't do it with uh, two of the Cook uh, two, six, uh, six, two six zeros. And yeah, maybe I have tried another, um, uh, maybe I have saved a web point and tried out another engine. And maybe while the Cook uh, 280 is at least a lot quicker than these two uh, sloths, it may have also not done the trick. Even with both of the class 48s trying to pull the 24 cars and the caboose out of the um, uh, oil field valley, it's kinda not been enough for everything. And maybe I went there, just got the bad sea from the logging camp, and that made the difference. But at that point, I decided to maybe just wait for um, this actual update to happen. And honestly, my plan going forward is I would love to bury these engines. Really only bought them because they were the last coal driven engines at the time that I was not having. So this was more for collection's sake, but overall, I don't enjoy these. They don't have good acceleration, they don't have good top speed. And their overall power is also more middling than anything else, so I would likely just put them into an engine shed very far off the track and just keep them there in case anything ever gets done with their top speed. I don't know if the current top speed is um, anywhere near realistic or something like that, or if this all just needs an update. I know a few engines kind of need one. From what I know, the Montezuma should at least be very quick despite being... Yeah, not that powerful. But yeah, as it is, I wouldn't be using these ones and I think two twins should be doing the trick. Both in helping getting the um, stuff out of um, a valley up the 2 percenter line with the help of the class 48s without requiring any more additional engines as well as getting everything just up here the 1 percent line and doing so at quite the nice top speed. However, that brings me to the elephant in the room and that is the entire update and how I want to deal with this. If you watched my admittedly very long video about the update itself, you will already know what I'm about to talk about regarding how the entire thing messed up the uh, industries here. Basically what happens, to give you guys a quick overview in case you don't know, we didn't just get the uh, the industries to be placed as they are right here. They actually separated out different buildings and different parts of um, structures to kind of try and find their own ground level. Right now one of the platforms and one of the buildings up front here is very far high up in the air and if I place it all down on a slope or something uh, can't do that right there. Okay, there we go. You will see that they are all kinda on their own height level. There is quite a difference in here. Looks a bit like a Minecraft village in the mountain sometimes. And yeah, this is how this entire thing works. The problem I have with this, it's, um, it's applied retroactively to anything that has already been placed in the past. So this can easily mess up a lot of stuff that people have built. Things that they may have placed down and actually built some groundwork below in order to make it look like it's not uh, completely floating in the sky. And this is what sadly happened to my offloading platform here for the logs. And attached to that is the entire storage for the logs themselves, so they are now subaquatic for some reason. Thanks, devs. And yeah, this would have been alright if it only applied to new industries as they place them down. But anything that has been placed beforehand should have just not been affected at all. And I kind of hope they revert this uh, change. It already messed up um, their industry placement on the default map. But I don't know if they will do that. The thing is right now, this safe in particular has last been overwritten or edited before the anniversary update. Of course I've opened it, but unless I save it, it should all still have the original data, and I kind of want to keep it that way. Just in case we either get um, this changed by the devs, 
or if maybe Radio World Studio updates and I could maybe do something with this that could potentially uh, help having the original data form, stuff like that. And therefore I just don't want to touch this anymore until something is fixed. Maybe somebody from the, um, uh, from the community will figure out a way to deal with this, how to make this work, but right now I did a little bit of testing yet, but couldn't figure out anything uh, to this point. To be honest, it hasn't been nearly exhaustive or anything like that. I just tried a few things that I could come up real quick with and uh, yeah, none of those worked. Anyways, it doesn't really change anything. The main thing is, yeah, I'm kind of putting this on hiatus. I know it's not the first save that I put on hiatus. There has been the one on the original industry placement. And I think it's time to kind of make a decision on this, which I haven't been wanting to do. But let's be clear. I likely won't be going back to the original save. I like the stuff that I built there. I like some of the ways the industries have been placed, but especially the last three one or the last three ones there, they haven't been all that fun and I kind of lost interest real quickly as I started approaching that area. And that's also been the reason why I put so much time into getting this running and playing on this so much. I've just been enjoying this version of the save so much more than the original one. So yeah, with me not having any actual plans anymore to go back to the old one, with me putting this one on the hiatus, uh, what leaves me, uh, what does that leave me with? I'll be going on to the new map. I tried to figure out a few placements for industries already. It's not all perfect and uh, to be honest the areas are kind of lack lacking some flat spots where I can just put down some industries and especially stuff like the iron mine and the sawmill are incredibly difficult to fit uh, onto that map because there's really no space where it's kind of meant for this. It really needs a um, very specific setup to work properly and everything that I found there is written with some compromises but I eventually had a place that worked alright. It looks a bit weird but we'll see about that once we get there. Anyways, yeah, going forward I'll be starting a playthrough on the Lake Valley map. This one is something that I again do want to come back to. But most likely rather if, especially if uh, this stuff has been dealt with in some way or another, maybe if we get a few more industries, there are still a few areas that I would consider placing one down, but something like that would need to happen. I don't just want to keep on playing with um, everything that I have here right now, because honestly I'm kind of done with most of it. I could still build a proper yard for myself which I don't really fancy doing, but eventually should be getting into, but right now I just don't wanna. There's still a few other fields that I could maybe do here and there, but I think for the most part we've done on this map what is possible without just um, putting down more of the same types of industries, I just need something new. And that map, while being the same old industries all the time, it at least has a few other things to offer that are um, not the same uh, old pine tree all the time. Kinda getting tired of this stuff, especially with how it's just plastered all over the place. The new map for all its faults, it has some things going for it, but this map is sadly severely lacking. But yeah, I think enough about that. I made my point, I think, going on to the new map. This one will be coming back too, hopefully, but gonna take a while waiting for this to be fixed, waiting for a few more industries to be coming out and then placing them somewhere on this map. So let's go on to the last topic that I had in mind for today, actually going on to a little bit of a world tour. By the way, one thing that I forgot to mention, with this platform in that uh, place, I don't even fully know if this is still working as intended, so no idea. So if we just go into this menu here, we can actually fly around a little and I just wanted to use this as an excuse to show off the entire map. I think we should start at... Let's go to the... Um, to the freight depot. Yeah. That one. 
starting all the way back here. This has been <laughs> yeah, quite the thing to place down. Wanted it to be in a remote location, so you actually need to travel a little bit and uh, put a bit of work into do something here. Having the switchback in the background will continue further in that direction. Uh, let's actually go to the end of the switchback. So this is the end of the lower part. The rest of the upper track continues all the way around here and into that direction here. Why do I still have this on? Oops, falling out of the sky. I'm sorry if this is a bit rough, I'm not exactly 100% uh, um, familiar with the controls yet. Or at least not to that degree. So yeah, the entire switchback over here, the main line going behind the freight depot, just to stay clear of all the stuff I have here. And then going on towards the um, uh, second uh, lumber yard that I have here. So the logging camp right here was placed after the fact in the place where the uh, oil field used to be. I think quite the elaborate, almost trumpet interchange uh, track onto the main line again, uh, widely, uh, uh, widely spaced, uh, just run around track, going in the corner and just another freeway switch on the, or freeway junction on the main track. We'll take a look at the area over there in a moment. It's likely gonna happen towards the end of the whole thing. Over here, the main line just goes straight up north towards the sawmill, bypassing the starting area. And yeah, this is where I kind of wanted to, but never really actually wanted to work on just getting a, a main station placed. It's all pretty temporary, still having the skeleton cars there, but not too much else. I think if I wanted to build an actual station, it would go behind the back of the buy track. Then turn around and connect to the front here and maybe have a little bypass track just to get to the front with maybe uh, yeah, just a huge um, a turntable roundhouse thing for the engines somewhere where we have a bit of space. But yeah, connecting back to the main line, we go towards the sawmill with another freeway junction. And yeah, this is where we have all of this station, another pretty simple one, really similar to the logging camps, and I actually wanted to rework that logging camp over there, never gotten really around to it, and it would be more to have a different setup here. So let's now stick with the line going up to the iron mine, since that's the next logical one to go to, going over this huge uh, canyon over here. Just one gigantic bridge. Everything here being, I think, was it 1.5% or 2? I think it's 2. Which is just too steep for uh, some trains, and I would really need uh, quite a strong one, possibly even the Lee Mine, in order to get a lot of supplies up here. Did the resupply over here recently, so that's all stocked up. And the station itself is pretty much identical to what I have at the, on the other safe. There's also, of course, the coal mine up there, which we'll take a look at a little bit later down the line. But first up, we need to go up here. Following this track, which is meant for any cars using hoppers to get uh, iron ore from the mine towards the smelter. Just to go over the back of a mountain here. This was a bit of a weird thing for me to try and implement. Maybe I could have gone with a switchback over here. Because this turn, just trying to keep the radius, is kinda, it's going very wide on that part. But yeah, going back down with a 2 percenter, I think. And eventually catching back up with this other track that's coming up from the original logging camp. Or not the original one, but the one that I placed first on this map. So yeah, connecting back here, and I think we should first go and take a look at the other track that we missed here. This huge area, by the way, being another place where I could see myself uh, placing down uh, another industry. Maybe even two, who knows. 
I think something that has been very difficult beforehand because it's all on a slight slope. Now that all the industries are separated into individual buildings, here by the way another huge plateau that seems to be completely flat. Uh, now that everything has been kinda separated, it would be easier to do something on there. And again, this might be something that I would go for if uh, we get more industries. But yeah, back at the switch over there, we have the regular main line going past the oil field down in the valley and the logging camp over there. Also would like to have a little mine somewhere in yeah, that region. Plus that ravine, it's so, it's so cool. Would need to build something there, but again, not just repeating another one of those industries that I have placed already, would likely revive something that's uh, completely new. But yeah, the main line brings us to the, or the first logging camp that I placed down here, just bypassing it with a freeway junction going into the station, which is the most massive station I have here. And while it's partially for the logging camp itself, it's also a general space for stuff to be stored or even something to be brought down to the oil field. We have multiple sidings, the most right one being only for arriving empty cordwood cars, the one left to it being uh, to shove any loaded uh, cordwood cars on. So that actually has an end of track device that you can bypass by going onto the rightmost one. And just so that any cars that are shoved on there, they don't just uh, end up going off the other side of the switch and causing all, uh, all sorts of trouble. Eventually added this little turnaround loop just because turning the train around every time I want to go into the valley felt a bit weird. I even ended up just going down there in reverse, which worked a bit better, but also still was a bit weird. And I would still have to turn the entire thing around when I come back up here, so... This felt like the better solution than just uh, dealing with that all the time. I could have maybe made some of the sidings a bit longer, but they usually work out for what I have in mind for them. But yeah, going back on the main line, we now follow the 1% grade up all the way to the smelter. At uh, some point we will be reconnecting with the other track that I just showed you guys. And I'm just so happy that I can now do something like this, fly over this if this was just a gigantic uh, model scale um, railroads. Certainly looks like that. That's not a place building, that's just the one that I'm using to fly here, so don't worry. And yeah, now with uh, both tracks reconnected, we enter the... Um, area of the smelter. With another freeway junction to continue on the main line, but I won't know, let's stay on here and just go for the entire loop around the area and just have a little look at everything from up above. And this is another 2% incline that just goes around the entire place very closely to the um, uh, to the waterfall here, just bypassing it and eventually arriving on what used to be the coal mine plateau, but is now reserved for the refinery. The refinery being a very complex mess of tracks that makes a lot of sense once you work on it and actually start using the industry, but if you just look at it from over there, it looks like a total mess. With a lot of uh, runoff sidings that just, yeah go over here and eventually add somewhere. The mainland of course continuing further up, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. To go back down, let's focus on the 5% downwards line, taking a 180 degree turn here, which again was very tough to fit in the area, but I'm glad I could make it work. This is a decent compromise between making an efficient downward track, but also keeping it somewhat fitting in the entire area overall. From here we can also clearly see the dev antenna track to go up here. I think from this point you would need to, uh, I think let's go around here, stick to the side of a mountain, come around somewhere over here and that kind of stuff. 
but that's way too long for what I had in mind and uh, here <laughs> I didn't end up going with that. I don't regret not doing with any, like, anything like that. Ideally I would rather have the option to make my own cuts and level out the terrain instead of having to rely on some developer carving away for me from the get-go. But yeah, now that we are back in the valley, let's take a look at this station. The, the triple crossover for the quick way up, through the supply line, two engine sheds here, I don't... Oh yeah, I have a, I have a one twin C in there. The other engine shed on this end is actually where I put the other engines for the tanker cars. And we just have a lot of sidings here. Two very long ones for just the um, uh, Corfu train. And yeah, it almost takes the entire length of it as well. It's such an insane project that I underwent here, but it worked out really well. It was a bit tough getting up here, but now that I did, it's quite nice. I was just thinking about maybe I could go with only one engine now to get all the corporate up here, but I don't think the Lima would be enough for even that. But yeah, besides that, we have a few uh, tracks going off either side of the um, station, and I don't know, this has to be one of my favorite areas, especially once I started incorporating some stuff that you actually deliver some of the supplies for up here, only down there, and then it's getting taken over by the climaxes and all that. This is just so much fun, and I think in the future I will continue placing some industries close to each other as long as they don't directly interact with each other. So if I placed on, let's say, the ironworks down there, and it, of course, has some interactions with the refinery, as it can deliver pipes and that kind of stuff, that would be a bit lame. But these ones, I don't think they even share any resources they need. And they don't share anything they output, so that's actually pretty good for how it all works out. And... Yeah, I might do some stuff like that in the future. And that's also another reason why I'm so looking forward to getting more industries, because that allows me more combinations. When you look at things like the sawmill, apart from the smelter, the sawmill has some interactions with every single other industry in the game. It gets stuff from the logging camp, and it delivers things to almost every industry that there is. So putting that uh, too close to anything else is kind of a bit troubling. And if you put two other industries together, you will likely be able to bundle up uh, deliveries for those. But yeah, coming down on this side, we can see the 2% uh, track going down towards the switchback. Just going all the way across the side of a mountain range here. And <laughs> This is such an incredibly long track, but it at least allows me to get down to the ground level without having to deal with yeah, just a very steep incline. So this is a good way to go back up if you have empties or anything that you need to deliver, as long as the engine is strong enough. But this is actually working out pretty well. I was even thinking of maybe having a switch uh, somewhere that allowed me to bypass the switchback part. But I think that's also kind of good to have. I could maybe make uh, some of it a bit longer in the future. But yeah, now let's go back to the northern end of uh, this little part of the valley. Where we of course have a multi-station setup. So coming down all the way from up here, we have a 10% decline. So this is the steepest grade that you can actually lay in the game without any tricks. And it goes straight into this multi-station setup, allowing you to directly either deliver stuff to the ironworks or go up into the main line. And yeah, this station was very tough for me to figure out. And even once I had it all laid down before the um, signs came out, I sometimes had problems figuring out which way I needed to go to get to a particular end of it. We have uh, stuff like multiple intertwined uh, freeway junctions here. I mean, this is a simple one over here. But there is also something that looks like a freeway junction, but it's kind of way more complicated. But yeah, we have multiple ways. First of going to the, um, to the main line. We can go to either side of the ironworks. 
we can go to this helper station. We now have this huge um, semicircle for storing cars on, which I talked about earlier today. And we, of course, have yeah, just this entire thing here. Still a bit of a clearing where the first version of the station used to be, but this thing, oh my, is so nice. And from here on, we can either use the clay bases to deliver some supplies to our coal mine up in the mountains, or even go on a little field trip with our Lookout Express, all going up onto this track right here, which will eventually go up to a 7% grade, all the way around the mountains. And <laughs> I mean, for this one being 7% already, it's still quite the long trip around. Even at some point going so high that I needed a bit of support for the, um, yeah, for even the iron bridges. Or steel bridge, whatever. It's a metal. That's what counts. Going into a switchback up here, which you can see all the way from down at the starting area. Which is also on a slight incline, so anything that comes up here should come back down uh, on its own. And when we go further up the mountain, Still with a steady 7% incline until we finally go up to the coal mine. Which was, funnily enough, the very first industry that I ever placed on this map. Because this was something that I wanted to figure out and I'm just so happy with how it all turned out. You don't need too much coal in this game, you don't need to supply this thing too often. And therefore it's just pretty nice going here occasionally and... Yeah, doing a bit of a more elaborate trip, but this would definitely be too much if you had to do it all the time. And once the Lookout Express came into the game, or came into play for me, once I decided on that, I even extended this entire thing way further up into the mountain, with a 10% incline, and a lot more switchbacks that become only more numerous and frequent the higher we go, because we are kinda running out of mountain at this point. And yeah, while I haven't done so yet, I still think that maybe the last switchback, the one on the other side here that we are coming up onto right now, this one should have maybe not been here and I just should have gone and even out the track over here and make a little footpath up the rest of it. Might still do so in the future, but as I mentioned before, right now I won't be doing any more saves on this thing. So, what it is, is this being the goodbye to this entire world for now. I hope to come back here soon, or at least in the not so distant future. I mean, this has been a trip, more so than the first one. And I just felt ending it all off with just going through everything once more, I mean. It's been fun. It's been an experience. I don't know what the other map will bring, I don't know what the future will bring for the game, but I cannot deny that this has been quite something. And I thank you all guys for being with me for this part. I hope this was enjoyable for you as well, maybe it has given you a few ideas if you're playing this game as well, or something similar, or at least was yeah, a good watch here and then. And with that, I can only say thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.